Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, uh, and thank you very much for attending my uh, dissertation proposal defense today. Uh, my name is Sanjay Vijayaratna. I'm a PhD student at Noises Center. Uh, the title of my dissertation is Framework to Understand Emoji Meaning, Similarity, Sense, Disambiguation, and Prediction of Emoji Using Emoji Name. Uh, my dissertation committee includes Dr. Amit Shep, who's uh, my dissertation advisor, uh, Dr. Derek Doran, Dr. T.K. Prasad, and Dr. Wembo Wong. Dr. Derek Doran and uh, Dr. Wembo Wong are joining remotely. Okay, uh, so can anyone guess what this song is? Yes, anyone? Yeah, uh, call me maybe. So uh, this is uh, uh, a social media post from a random person. Uh, so he has replaced uh, some of the words in uh, uh, in this uh, song lyrics, and uh, Dr. Doran is the one who actually found this image. So I should thank him oh, for that. Wow. Yeah. So if you see how uh, uh, ice emoji is, is used, so in this line, uh, ice emoji replaces the word I, and in the second line, it replaces the word look. So this clearly uh, shows that uh, people use emoji to replace words and also they you know use the same emoji to replace different words which means emoji an emoji can have multiple meanings uh, based on uh, you know different contexts so certainly this person who, who posted this message had an understanding of this uh, this uh, emoji and you know how it should uh, look like in a sentence uh, so can we build a machine so that machine also can have a similar level of understanding? Uh, so that's uh, something we would like to uh, see. Hey, there are a lot of hallmark cards. What? There are lots of greeting cards and hallmark cards with similar things. Oh, I see. So here's another uh, uh, problem. So here I have listed uh, pairs of emoji, and if I ask you to uh, you know, tell me whether they are similar or not, uh, you'll say, uh, you know, most of them are similar, and you'll also tell me how similar they are uh, if I ask you to, you know, rate them from a scale of 1 to 10 or so. Uh, can we ask a computer to do the same? So, you as a human being had an understanding of how these image, emoji, uh, emojis, emoji pairs look like and how they are used in sentences, so you can, you know, rate them. Can we make a computer, uh, you know, do that? So those are some of the problems that we want to look at in this uh, dissertation. With that, let me give you one overview of uh, my work. So we are mainly focused on emoji, the small pictograph characters that you, we all use on social media these days. Emojis are extremely popular on social media. Uh, so they were first introduced in uh, late 1990s. And then uh, Unicode Consortium standardized emojis in 2010, and thereafter, different uh, mobile platform uh, providers such as Apple and uh, Android started to support emoji uh, in their operating systems. For an example, Apple uh, released their emoji keyboard in 2011 and then um, uh, and, uh, Android released uh, their version of uh, the emoji keyboard in 2013 and uh, you know that uh, made a lot of people to post uh, emojis in uh, Instagram photo comments. So uh, this is a study done at Instagram. They looked at uh, you know how frequently people use emoji in photo comments. Uh, so you see, uh, you know, into by 2015, uh, close to 40% of photo comments on Instagram had at least one emoji. This is very common across social media platforms. In 2015, Twitter reported that they processed 6.6 .6 billion uh, emoji, uh, 6.6 6 .6 billion tweets that contain face with tears of joy emoji. And the same emoji was named uh, the word of the year in 2015 uh, by the Oxford Dictionary. And it was the first time an emoji was named as the word of the year. Uh, you can see uh, Facebook uh, processes close to 60 million emojis per day, and Facebook Messenger processes 5 billion emojis per day. And uh, not only on social media, they are also common in uh, marketing-related emails. Uh, in 2016, uh, emojis were used uh, 
seven uh, there's an emoji use in market uh, there's an increase in uh, emoji use in marketing campaigns and that in, uh, the amount of increase was uh, 777 percent compared to the uh, statistics of 2015. not only they are popular on social media they are slowly taking over the language that we use on social media so here's a study done uh, at georgia tech uh, by paul nathan and others so they reported that uh, people on Twitter uh, replaces emoticons with emojis. Here's another study uh, done at Instagram, and they reported that people replace slang terms with uh, emoji. Uh, so emojis are extremely popular, and uh, people are using them uh, in you know clever ways on social media. Is that uh, so? What are the other ways uh, of using them on social media? A recent study done at Stanford reported that people mainly use uh, emoji to express emotion, sentiment, and sarcasm. Another study done uh, by Kelly and others in 2015 uh, reported that people use emojis to maintain uh, uh, their connections in a playful manner, especially if they are in relationships. Uh, so emojis are new, fairly, uh, you know, even though they were there since uh, 1990s. Uh, they were popular. Uh, they became popular, you know, recently. Because of that, uh, there are not much uh, emoji resources uh, that are out there for a computer to understand the meaning of an emoji. So that's one challenge that we face when it comes to processing emoji or understanding emoji. And there's another challenge uh, related to emoji understanding, and uh, that is. Uh, when emoji were first introduced, they were not uh, assigned any, you know, they were not defined with uh, semantics, rigid semantics associated with them. So what happened was when people started to use emojis, they started to uh, associate meanings to them, which made emojis ambiguous. So let's look at these problems in a bit detail. So uh, emoji ambiguity can happen due to two main reasons. The first one being the differences in rendering platforms. So if you look at the Unicode code points I have listed uh, at the, uh, here. So these five uh, Im images of emojis refer to the same Unicode uh, code point, which means this Unicode code point can look differently across different platforms, which makes emojis ambiguous. And, uh, when people, you know, using emojis on social media and, you know, in other platforms, people also started to assign different meanings to emojis. So if you say, uh, look at this second example, you will see uh, people use uh, fa uh, face of uh, tears of joy emoji, face with tears of joy emoji to express, uh, you know, happiness, uh, sadness, both. At the same, you know, happiness and sadness, both. Uh, similarly, folded hands uh, emoji. Uh, is being used to uh, say that someone is praying and uh, or, or else someone is thankful for something and so on. So emojis can take different meanings. Let's also look at the other problem uh, related to the lack of resources. Uh, if you look at the uh, resources out there on the web, uh, there are many websites that could uh, provide you very basic information about emoji, such as emoji names, uh, pictures and descriptions. But currently, there's no resource uh, that is out there which can give you a machine processable uh, emoji meaning. And uh, if you look at uh, text understanding and text related research, uh, researchers have already shown that having access to machine processable uh, word dictionaries can you know, lead to better understanding of text. So similarly, we wanted to hypothesize whether having access to an emoji meaning repository could improve the uh, task of emoji understanding. That's what led us to uh, this work. That's what motivated us to uh, uh, do this work. So in this, uh, this is my thesis statement. And here, the main focus is on building machine processable emoji meaning dictionaries and using it for emoji understanding tasks. So in particular, we look at three tasks, emoji similarity calculation, emoji sense disambiguation, and emoji prediction. So these are the contributions of this dissertation. 
uh, as I said, we are going to build a machine readable emoji sense inventory, which we name the EmojiNet. And then we are going to apply that for uh, three uh, emoji understanding tasks. OK, so with that, let me move to the first part of my presentation, which is about building a machine readable emoji dictionary. So this, uh, this work was published in uh, SOC Team for 2016 and ICWSM 2017. Uh, and the resource is available at uh, emojinet.noises.org. Uh, this was recently added to uh, the Kaggle datasets as well. And uh, Psychology Today and Delivery Blog uh, recently reported our work. Uh, so before we look at how we build this uh, system, let's look at some of the uh, resources, emoji resources uh, on the web, which we, also, we, we, which we utilize to build this tool. So we looked at three main emoji resources on the web because they were they carry a lot of you know valuable information and at the same time they are accessed a lot they are, these are highly accessed emoji resources on the web so the first resource that we looked at was the unicode consortium website uh, unicode consortium is the governing body behind uh, standardizing emojis uh, sorry standardizing uh, character sets so emoji also uh, comes under that. So they are the responsible body to standardize emojis. Basically, they are the ones who uh, uh, come up with, uh, or, or, or uh, they are the ones who assign Unicode code points to emojis, and they are the one, ones who, who, who decide the, what are the new emojis that they are going to support in a, uh, you know, in future. So. Their website contains a lot of interesting information. Uh, for an example, here's, a, uh, here's an extract, a, a small screenshot of their website. So uh, their website contains information such as the Unicode code point, how, you know, emojis, look, uh, how emojis are shown in different platform, uh, platforms, emoji name, and they also used to contain emoji keywords. So these keywords can give you, give you a sense of uh, the meaning associated with this emoji, but they don't list those keywords anymore, unfortunately. Emoji uh, Emojipedia is another resource uh, that is very popular. Do you know popular. why they don't list the keywords anymore? Uh, I honestly don't know what yeah, the reason. So they recently updated their website yeah. and they, uh, they uh, you know, took down all the keywords. I mean, I think they must be facing the challenge or difficulty and, uh, you know, they would need a lot of uh, human involvement to try and... Uh, uh, keep up with it uh, and also the consensus. So let's get to let's let's reach out to somebody there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Certainly we can check with him. Yeah, we have some <laughs> contacts there. So. Yeah, emoji uh, pedia is another uh, well-known resource for uh, emoji meanings. Apart from the details that you will find in emoji consortium website, emoji pedia contains emoji descriptions. Emoji dictionary, another uh, you know resource that is out there, which can you know, give us a lot of information about emoji. So the most interesting part about this resource is that it's a crowdsource resource, and um, it lets people to uh, you know go to that resource, uh, go to this website, and put emoji meanings. And they organize emoji emoji meanings under their part of speech tags. So uh, we call those uh, sense labels. So for an example a word and a POS tag. So that's what we call sense label. So here's uh, an example of sense label. So people can go and uh, you know put content there. And you'll see there are a lot of noise because uh, it's a crowdsourced resource. So you have a lot of pre-processing here if you want to use it. So these are the, uh, here are some challenges that we face when it comes to you know using emoji resources on the web. Of course, they contain a lot of valuable information, complementary information. But at the same time, some resources, valuable resources like Emoji Dictionary contains a lot of noise. And at the same time, Emoji uh, Dictionary dis does not contain uh, information about Unicode code points. Unicode code points can act like, can act like a primary key. So it's, 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 it's the only unique thing uh, to an emoji except uh, uh, the name. Uh, so you, you may want to tell why, yes. or, or your best guess in case that's yeah. not for you. Yeah, so uh, because uh, whenever, uh, you know, someone, uh, whenever computers represent emojis, Unicode code point is uh, the one uh, that is being used. 
they, they don't use any other information. So uh, if you send uh, me a message using an Apple iPhone and if I'm using a Samsung phone, what you will be sending me is the Unicode uh, code point. And I will see uh, this particular, so let's say you send me this emoji. So you will be internally sending me that Unicode code point. And I will see this image because I'm having a, a Samsung phone and you, you'll be seeing uh, the Apple version of the uh, image. So yeah, so that actually, uh, you know, that, that is the primary key if you look at uh, uh, emojis. So yeah, unfortunately, emoji dictionary does not uh, carry that information. So when it comes to uh, interpret these resources, we could face some challenges. So what we did, so to overcome these uh, challenges, we built uh, what is the uh, what is known as uh, you know uh, what is the last largest machine readable emoji sense inventory. It contains close to thirteen thousand uh, emoji sense definitions that that, that are spread across uh, close to two thousand four hundred emojis, uh, and we also have uh, context words uh, that are learned from uh, two huge copra for each and every sense definition uh, in our resource. So what is the growth rate of the emojis? Uh, so currently our resource has uh, 2,000, close to 2,400. And uh, this was, uh, so this has uh, emojis uh, that were supported until uh, uh, 2007, uh, end of 2016. So I think the, the uh, it was, yeah, so we crawled this site on uh, October 2016. So at that time, we had uh, 2,389. And every year, the Emoji Consortium introduces uh, emojis at least twice. So they do it sometime in April and sometime in October. So uh, currently, uh, it, uh, there are more than uh, 2,700 emojis. So within a year, they would probably support, uh, you know, 200 or so new emojis. So, yeah, the reason I ask is what is the process of keeping this up to date and keep continue to, to yes. make it so we, you, we certainly can update uh, this resource. In fact, we did this once. Uh, so uh, we first built this in uh, July 2016. And at that time, the latest release was uh, sometime in April, so we did not have the uh, latest emojis that were released in October. So uh, we, we did, uh, in fact, update this release one. So we you know, certainly can run the same program. As long as the web pages does not change, we don't need to uh, change the program. So we can certainly update this. Uh, and JS, uh, yeah. the new census that they added to EmojiNet, they mainly come from the Emoji Dictionary, is that right? Uh, emoji Dictionary and uh, keywords from the Unicode Consortium. We have both here, but now that uh, Unicode Consortium does not give us these keywords anymore, yeah, we will yeah. have to rely on uh, the Emoji Dictionary in the future. Okay. Does EmojiNet do any sanity checking or...? Yes, we, um, we do. Yeah. We, we do a lot. And I'll be describe, uh, discussing them in future slides, Dr. Don. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, so when we looked at uh, these resources on the web, we saw a lot of uh, complementary in information and a lot of interesting information about emojis. So we came up with this nine tuple notation so that uh, we can integrate you know, most of the interesting uh, uh, information uh, related to an emoji. So if you look at the nine tuple notation that we came up with, uh, we support uh, the Unicode code point, uh, the emoji names, emoji, emoji short codes. So these are very popular uh, whenever you want to access emojis in programming APIs. They they use these emoji short codes uh, instead of uh, Unicode code points because people cannot remember Unicode code points, but they can easily remember these short codes. So, uh, so we also have emoji definitions, uh, the, the, the keywords that relate to meanings, and most importantly, we have the sense labels and sense definitions. So sense labels are coming from the emoji dictionary and these are coming from uh, Babel. Now, now uh, those things that you're getting from the corpora, <coughs> um, there is use of embedding there? Uh, yes, but it is not shown in this slide. Okay. But I'll be talking about how we extend these uh, 
uh, context words using mm. word embeddings and I will also demonstrate how that can help us in uh, tasks like emoji sense disambiguation in the future slides. I just want to point, make a point a pointer for future, yeah. probably you understand, maybe others may, may or may not, but um, there is a potential opportunity. So currently if you look at emoji and all your work, it really is an interplay between the images that are there and the text that go with it. Okay. okay. And the images, to the extent that they are, they are pixel. I think that there is a potential opportunity for, uh, because empath I look, you look at a company like Empathetica and other things, there's an mm -hmm. MIT uh, yeah, you know, spun off company and other things. What I see is that you could possibly make this as a, an index over a multimodal communication streams. You see what I'm saying? Okay, yeah, we can certainly see what are the possibilities there. Mm. Meaning that I would uh, be given photographs mm. and I would convey uh, what the photograph uh, says, not just purely in the text, but also text plus emoji as an yeah, example. Yeah, so there's, there's actually a startup working on that. Okay. <laughs> that problem, so yeah. Uh, now the starter probably doesn't have the emoji net, no, so then no, you can don't. do it better. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's look at uh, how we build emoji net. So as I as I already discussed, we looked at uh, three openly available web resources, uh, and uh, then we integrated them. So integrating the Unicode cons uh, Unicode uh, consortium website uh, in information that we extracted from the Unicode consortium website with Emojipedia was easy because both of these resources had uh, Unicode code points listed. But uh, so we could uh, extract the Unicode code points uh, and uh, emoji names from uh, the Unicode consortium website, things like short emoji short codes, definition from Emojipedia website, and so on. But um, uh, integrating uh, these two resources with Emoji Dictionary was challenging because Emoji Dictionary did not have a presence of uh, the Unicode code points. So to, to, to tackle that problem, we had to do uh, a, a, an image processing uh, step. And uh, you know, once we use the Im image processing step, uh, I'll explain you uh, that in a bit. We could integrate uh, these two resources with Emoji Dictionary. So for each emoji, that led uh, for us to extract emoji sense labels for each emoji from uh, the emoji dictionary. And once we extract sense labels from emoji dictionary, we wanted to assign uh, machine readable or machine processable sense IDs to uh, these uh, uh, sense labels. For that, we use a resource called DoubleNet. DoubleNet is the most comprehensive multilingual machine readable di dictionary that is uh, out there. Uh, and uh, to automatically assign uh, machine readable English uh, meanings to these sense labels, we had to use a word sense disambiguation task. So I'll be talking about these two tasks in my next slides. Um, what is the possibility of uh, taking both the emojis and the text and come up with a likely emotion association with that. So take Venbo's work on text, uh, you know, to emotion. Yeah. Label. So we might look into that work uh, in our emotion, uh, sorry, emoji intent identification. Hmm. Because uh, if you look at uh, how people use emoji, uh, they use it to express emotion, sentiment, uh, and they also use it, use emoji to replace words in text and also to highlight certain words that are already present in text. So uh, the emotion, uh, emoji intent identification work that we are planning to do, mm. they are the want to develop methods so that we, you know, looking at a text, we want to automatically uh, come up with a label saying mm. that, okay, uh, you know, in this text, this emoji has been labeled, uh, used as, uh, uh, another token to replace a word. Mm. If not, uh, uh, you know, the emoji has been used to uh, uh, express the emotion of the sentence. So we can certainly. Uh, what I, what is, what I so just something to keep in mind that what used to be uh, the emphasis on sentiment two years ago, sentiment and you know uh, it was a big thing. Mm. It's still a big thing. There was a huge amount of papers in I many many social media. I think that is shifting to emotion. Yeah. Now, and 
Um, as more people will do the work on uh, emotion with text, and you know, Benbo was one of the, yeah. you know, probably the earliest. Yeah. Now, we would have opportunity to show 10% or more improvement on those content that you have both text and emoji to say here, we, we can get this. We did one uh, sort of a pilot study, if you remember uh, Shufa's class project. Mm. That's what she did. So mm. she did uh, utilize some of the definitions from ImojiNet to uh, improve uh, emotion detection. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, so uh, let me talk about how we integrated uh, Emoji Dictionary with the other uh, resources. So um, to do this uh, integration, we first extracted uh, 1,074 images from uh, Emoji Dictionary website that uh, refers to 1,074 emojis. Uh, and then we also extracted close to 18,615 uh, images from uh, uh, the Unicode Consortium website that belong to uh, 2,389 emojis. Then we use color intensities of each emo uh, uh, image uh, to uh, uh, integrate the uh, two resources. For an example, if you see uh, the Im images that I, I have shown uh, here, so we started with uh, the images that we extracted from the emoji dictionary. We uh, uh, divided each image into uh, 25 uh, regions uh, that are of size uh, 25 by 25 pixels and then we calculated uh, average color intensities of each region and we compare them with their corresponding regions from each and every image uh, so that uh, the image that has you know the least dissimilarity or the most similarity image uh, images were matched and the, uh, that image unicode co uh, code point was uh, associated with the uh, other image from uh, the emoji dictionary website so are these the same size always? Uh, we we have to resize, but most of the time, uh, if if you are looking at one particular resource, at least in that resource, they are the same size. They are of the same size. Yeah, we 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 did uh, resize them into a, a single size. Yes. Okay. So once we uh, did this integration, the next task was to uh, extract the sense labels for each and every emoji. So uh, as I said, uh, we could easily extract sense labels from the emoji dictionary because uh, emoji dictionary already had that information. Emoji uh, Unicode emoji list only had keywords, but uh, but they were not associated with POS tags. So what we did was for each keyword that we extracted for each emoji, we automatically generated th three types of POS tags: nouns, verbs, and uh, adjectives. Then we um, and I also said that uh, emoji dictionary has a lot of uh, uh, noisy data in incorrect values. To, 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 to filter out noisy data, what we did was we used this uh, resource called DoubleNet, which is again uh, an English dictionary. Then we checked whether DoubleNet contains any you know, sense definitions uh, for each and every uh, sense label that we had in our sense pool. So we call this uh, the sense pool. We, uh, so what we did was we query double net by giving it face adjective uh, as a text. So if double net has uh, any de uh, definitions for face as an adjective, right, then uh, I, I, I can safely assume that, okay, uh, since this dictionary has some you know, English meanings, this representation could be a correct use of the word face. But we all know that face adjective is an incorrect use of the word face. So DoubleNet does not contain any uh, sense definitions for these words. So we remove uh, those things. So uh, using these filterations, we were able to uh, remove most of the noise from uh, 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 resources like Emoji Dictionary. And then uh, we were left with uh, close to 1,300, uh, sorry, 13,000 um, Emoji Sense labels uh, to assign uh, machine readable uh, uh, sense IDs to them. So uh, now to assign uh, BabelNet sense IDs to uh, emoji sense labels that we extracted in the previous step, we used uh, a word sense disambiguation task. So for this word sense disambiguation task, uh, we, uh, we used uh, 
a tech scopus uh, called MASC. Uh, this te tech scopus is already annotated with double net uh, sense IDs. So, and, and uh, using these annotations, uh, using those annotations, we calculated uh, the most frequent sense for each and every word in this uh, corpus. And if that word is present in EmojiNet, we assign the same uh, BabelNet sense ID to uh, that word in our uh, in that that word in uh, EmojiNet. We use most frequent sense because in word sense disambiguation relay uh, research, most frequent sense is considered as a hard to beat baseline. If a particular word is not present in uh, uh, max corpus, we use uh, another method called most popular sense. Uh, so most popular, we calculated most popular sense based on uh, uh, the, the details available in BabelNet because BabelNet uh, integrates multiple resources. So if a particular sense is very popular on BabelNet, and if that sense is not available in uh, MASC corpus, we assign uh, the most popular sense to that particular word and include it in uh, EmojiNet. So we did two main tasks, one image processing task and one word sense disintegration task, and I'm going to uh, explain how we evaluate the two tasks here. So uh, the first task, image processing task, we evaluate, evaluated this task using uh, you know, human annotators. We ask them to, uh, you know, tell us whether the algorithm has correctly uh, grouped emojis or incorrectly grouped emojis, whether the algorithm has correctly grouped emojis or not. Uh, and uh, in fact, this uh, algorithm performed, even though the algorithm is very simple, uh, it performed very well in our use case. Uh, the main reason is that uh, the images that we used are emojis. They are very simple. They only had uh, maybe, you know, three, four colors in them, and they did not have background colors, uh, and they were only, you know, two to three objects at max. So, uh, so this algorithm uh, worked very well in our case. And we also looked at when this algorithm failed, and we found out that the algorithm fails when there are very similar images with small differences. So if you look at these examples, uh, there are, you know, there are multiple clock emojis, uh, but the arms are at different places. So the algorithm fails in cases like this. So we had 14 instance, instances like that, uh, and our annotators uh, uh, corrected those instances in our final results. So these are the uh, word sense disambiguation results. So we, as I said, we use a most frequent sense baseline and a most uh, popular sense. So is the image robust with respect to kind of rotation and those kinds of things? Uh, so in this case, uh, like if you look at emo images of emoji, uh, you will not see rotations and all. So that you know, the the data set we had was you know, uh, it, it consists of images of emoji. So in uh, in those cases, we don't have like rotations and things like that. So yeah. Uh, so the most frequent sense baseline performed uh, with an accuracy level of uh, close you know eighty five. Uh, and the most popular sense baseline worked uh, with an accuracy level of uh, 80%. And when combined, uh, the, uh, the word sense disambiguation task gave us an accuracy of uh, 83%, which is you know, uh, fairly nice when it comes to word sense disambiguation tasks. In summary, what we did was we created a machine uh, readable emoji sense repository. Uh, I did not discuss these steps in my presentation, but I will be discussing them if you, if, I mean, I can discuss them if you are interested in them. Uh, uh, we have all our, res uh, we have the resource and all the REST APIs that we developed to access this resource uh, on this website. You can, you know, access and download our data set from there. So we came up with this data set and then we wanted to see whether we can, uh, you know, use this data set to address uh, you know, new problems. So the first problem that we picked up was uh, the problem of emoji similarity calculation. So uh, we published this work in uh, Web Intelligence Conference uh, 2017. So let's look at uh, why emoji similarity is an important problem. So we all know that uh, similar words can improve uh, the recall in uh, text-based search. Similarly, if you want to know uh, whether similar emojis can improve the recall of emoji-based search, 
you can certainly use emoji similarity. Right? So emoji similarity is also important uh, when it comes to design optimized uh, keyboards for handheld devices. For an example, currently there are uh, close to 2700 emojis. How can you show all these emojis in a small uh, size screen? So you can certainly use emoji similarity group uh, to group emojis into meaningful groups so that you know you can uh, design optimized keyboards. Emoji domains are also uh, catching up. So people are now using uh, emoji in domain names. So you can also use emoji uh, similarity to, to suggest new domain names based on the similarity of emoji if a particular domain name is or is not. Hey, ben Bo, yeah, I know. Yeah. Go ready as a business here. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know. Actually, there was a rush uh, either at the end of last year or the beginning of this year. The domainers started registering emoji domain names. Ah, yeah. should we should we uh, uh, declare this as intellectual property and license it to you? <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So let's look at what is uh, the emoji similarity problem. So the problem is given two images. Uh, images of emoji can we uh, or given to emoji can we come up with a measure that uh, you know encodes or, or interpret its meaning the interpretation and the intended use so image emo, emoji similarity problem is not easy uh, due to you know uh, two main reasons uh, so if you look at uh, if, uh, so if you look at how to approach this problem so you can approach this problem using pixel-based emoji similarity method. What I mean by that is you can compare how these images look and uh, you know, uh, come up with how similar images, uh, you know, emojis are. But the problem is the same Unicode code point could contain you know, multiple uh, images. So, it, uh, so uh, Miller and others reported that, uh, I mean, discussed this issue. So if you use uh, this method, uh, you'll see uh, uh, like a lot of different uh, emoji similarity metrics that you can come up with uh, by comparing different variants of uh, you know images in these platforms. So what we wanted to do was to avoid this method because of the problems it has, and to come up with another way uh, where we would use uh, emoji definitions that are available on EmojiNet to uh, you know, describe the meaning of an emoji. Yeah, so this is what we wanted to do. So uh, we looked at past research, uh, you know, done on this problem. So we found three works. Uh, the work, work by Barbary mainly uses, uh, Barbary mainly uses uh, distributional semantics. So what he did was he collected a huge corpus of tweets and uh, came up with uh, uh, emoji embeddings for uh, you know for, so he considered uh, emojis as you know words and then came up with uh, and, and trained a word to act model and came up with uh, word vectors for emojis uh, that is purely based on distribution and semantics Eason on the other hand used some of the keywords that were available from uh, uh, Unicode consortium website and emoji names from there uh, and he also uh, uses some distribution semantics as well. Uh, Fall and others, uh, they came up with two measures. The first measure is exactly the same as uh, Barbary's measure, which is based on uh, the distribution semantics. Then they also proposed a method based on the overlap of the keywords in Unicode Consortium website. Given two images, extract all the keywords from Unicode Consortium website, check the overlap, based on Jacquard similarity, can you come up with a uh, measure? So this is very similar to uh, another app, uh, emoji similarity method that we proposed in our ICWSM paper. <clears throat> okay, so let's look at uh, how we model emoji meaning. So in emoji dictionary, for each emoji, we have uh, you know different information, like a lot of information. So out of that, we found that we can use you know, these three information nuggets to represent emoji meaning. So we use the definition of an emoji to uh, represent emoji meaning. We also considered the uh, emoji sense labels separately for a particular emoji, and uh, we thought it could represent the emoji meaning. And we also took uh, the sense definitions that we extracted from BabelNet 
and we considered them separately, uh, thinking that okay, sense de descriptions or sense definitions also can uh, represent meaning. We also incorporated all the words extracted from these three types of definitions and put it into one group and thought that could also interpret the meaning of this emoji. So then what we did was we also collected a huge corpus of tweets. So, so uh, with each emoji you have multiple meanings, right, associated with it? Yes. Yes, we did not treat them uh, so you're, differently. You're learning the embeddings which For all, contain all this. Yes, yes. Uh, so then what we did was we collected a huge Twitter corpus and we learned distributional semantics of words. We replaced each and every word in our uh, emoji representations with their corresponding word embeddings and uh, so that we could combine distributional semantics with uh, some knowledge that came from uh, emoji name. Uh, in our, our method. Then we used uh, an emoji uh, data set, emoji uh, uh, similarity data set that we created in-house uh, that contained 508 emoji pairs to evaluate our uh, results. So this is how we uh, uh, learn emoji embeddings. So first we trained uh, uh, a scriptram model using a word to -word tool uh, to train Skidram model, we use two corpora, uh, one Twitter corpora with emoji and uh, a Google News corpora. So Google News corpora was available online uh, for, for us to use. Then uh, for each word in those corpora, we uh, learn the word embeddings. So, so Google corpora you used with the keyword associated with the emoji? Uh, no. So this is uh, so they just also have emoji? No, 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 no. Google text corpora does not have emoji. Yeah, so uh, it's a news uh, article based. Right, text so you had to use the text associated with an emoji? To uh, no, we, we yeah, so in this step, we learned uh, uh, word embedding models for words. We did mm -hmm. not consider, you know, emoji as words. Okay. So we, uh, but the emojis were there uh, in our Twitter corpus. We learned word, uh, word embeddings for words. Then uh, we look at you know, the four, so we have four types of definitions based on emoji description, sense labels, mm -hmm. uh, and so on. So we took uh, one definition at a time and replaced their, uh, the words in that defini definition with their corresponding uh, word vectors le learned from, uh, you know, uh, these two corpora, one at a time. Then we integrated all these um, uh, word embeddings into one final uh, emoji vector which we call our, uh, the emoji embedding. So this is the emoji embedding in, in our case. So, so for an example, if you take this definition, so we will separately learn two different word embedding models, one from tweets, one from Google News. Then we take each and every word, you know, uh, so in the first run, we replace uh, these words by their corresponding uh, uh, word vectors that we learn from tweets and in integrate them all into, average them all into one final vector, right? So that is uh, one emoji embedding okay, so, that we... So let me ask you a second question. So, <laughs> yeah. so to me, there is a difference between uh, emoji description and emoji definition. Yes. So yeah. emoji description just tells me how the image looks like, like raised hands or whatever. Well, emoji definition tells me in what context does it get used, like celebration or yes. pray or whatever, yeah, right? Yeah. So do you separate them or you combine them? Uh, so we have, uh, you know, we we have an implementation where we have separated them and another implementation where we have integrated all, all of them. And uh, the best performance, uh, so we, we, we obtain the best performance when uh, with sense labels. So sense labels are these uh, keywords that are very specifically talk about the emoji meaning. Yeah, yeah so that's what gave us uh, the best performance. We we noticed that when you have more and more words like this, that could actually you know bring you noise. Yeah, because so, yeah, it's worth noting that the description and the definition may its inclusion may kind of go against the idea of emoji now, right? In the sense that. Emojis could be used for a variety of reasons mm -hmm. or have multiple interpretations. Yeah. The definitions um, attempt to as ascribe a specific meaning to them, right? Yes. So oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, that, that is right. So, 
And it begs the question if they actually should be included or not. So, yeah, but basically the, the fact that description and definitions are different is what causes uh, ambiguity and potentially allows you to add new meanings based on how people perceive it. So, uh, so sometimes uh, the emoji definition, so we extract these em emoji definitions from emoji uh, PDF. So sometimes these can be... Hey, wait, wait, you are confusing me now. So, oh. so which is definition and which is uh, description? So oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, so... <laughs> so uh, so we I think you need to be careful in writing. So, so one is description oh, yeah. of the image. Another one is the use that we yes. put that. Uh, yes. So thing. this is what we label definition. So, uh, emoji, emoji, pedia label. You know, give, label these as definitions. Yeah, so that's what. But sorry, you need to yeah. kind of clarify yeah. that. Yeah. 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 Thank you very much, Dr. Prasad, for bringing that forth. Yeah. So if you look at uh, uh, these descriptions, sometimes emoji pedia list uh, list. Or, 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 or they would give some hints of uh, hints about how an emoji should be used as well. So sometimes you get that information here, but sometimes you don't. Most of the time they discuss how you know emoji looks like in different languages. So yeah. 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 So uh, to evaluate this uh, uh, work, uh, we we created a ground truth data set. Uh, because uh, uh, we did not have a good uh, emoji singularity benchmark data set that was out there. So Barbary and others uh, have uh, you know contributed uh, a benchmark data set which only had 50 emojis, but uh, they had some uh, hand-picked uh, emojis there, so we did not want to use that. Uh, and at the same time, we did not want to come up with some random uh, emoji pairs because you have uh, close to 2,400 emojis uh, when we did this uh, experiment. So, you know, random emojis most of the time are not very meaningful. So to come up with a meaningful uh, list of emoji pairs, what we did was uh, we looked at the uh, the tweet copra that we collected and we calculated the uh, most frequently co-occurred emojis and we uh, selected uh, the uh, most uh, 508 most frequently co-occurred emojis for this experiment. So then we asked uh, 10 human annotators you know, uh, from our lab uh, to uh, answer two questions, uh, basically. One related to emoji uh, similarity and, and <coughs> one uh, related to emoji relatedness. So they were shown uh, two emojis and they were asked to rate uh, these, uh, the similarity and the relatedness of the two emojis based on 0 to 4 uh, scale. And um, then we averaged all their uh, you know, ratings uh, to come up with one value uh, for emoji similarity and one value, uh, one value for emoji relatedness. Then we uh, again averaged the two and come up with one final value for the uh, similarity of the two images, so two emojis. So then, uh, as I said, we have four types of definitions two types of copra, so all together we could uh, come up with eight different versions of emoji embeddings for one particular emoji, emoji meaning. So then uh, we use these uh, emoji embeddings to uh, uh, compare how well these uh, different embeddings could uh, calculate the emoji meaning and how well those calculations align with uh, the uh, ground truth data set that we create with the help of uh, you know our annotators. So to evaluate that we used the Spearman's rank correlation uh, coefficient or Spearman's rule. So there we noticed that uh, sense label based embeddings performed best and uh, and most of these embeddings had a, a strong uh, correlation with the uh, ground truth data and we noticed that uh, this performed best because uh, they were, you know, crisp words that clearly contributed to the meaning of the emoji. So this is most fine grain, right? Yes, yes. Uh, we, uh, so in this way, uh, we evaluated how well our emoji embeddings are, but we could not evaluate how well we do our embeddings do against the other approaches. Labels uh, correlated human interpretation best with the with that, you know, artifacts. Yeah. Right. Compared to 
broader things that you can get from the purple. Yeah, so uh, to evaluate how well our embeddings would do against the other embeddings out there, we used uh, a, a sentiment analysis uh, benchmark. So the idea of this experiment was not to come up with uh, state-of-the-art sentiment analysis results, but just to make sure that uh, you know how well we do uh, against the uh, existing approaches. So for that, we used uh, close to 13,000 uh, English tweets uh, from a benchmark data set, uh, which had uh, close to 2,300 uh, emojis in them. And in, in each training instance, which is a tweet, we replaced, uh, okay, let me go to this slide and explain. Uh, so, so, oh, that's not look, look right. Okay, so, uh, so this box should actually go here. So, to highlight what, what are the uh, best performance uh, results that we obtained. Uh, so, uh, if you look at the first row, first row is based on pure distributional semantics. So, what, what we have done here is that uh, each training instance in this tweet corpus, you know, uh, contains words. So, uh, using uh, the word vectors that obtained from uh, Google uh, News corpus, we have replaced each and every uh, you know, word in a training instance and average uh, those vectors to come up with uh, one final embedding for uh, you know, each instance and then use it in the sentiment analysis task. So, if, uh, if you look at this, um, this is uh, Google News. Uh, so, words in uh, the tweets are replaced by Google News vectors. Words, uh, sorry, emojis are replaced by emoji uh, vectors learned by this emoji to vec paper. So there was another uh, record uh, that had uh, Barbary's results, but uh, this is not the most up to date slide. So for some reason, I have clicked undo. I think <laughs> I recently edited this slide. So these are our results. Uh, so here, what we did was we replaced all the uh, words in a training instance using Google News embedding and the emojis with the uh, emoji embeddings that we learned using uh, sense labels and Google News. So we noticed that uh, uh, our results, uh, you know, uh, our uh, emoji embedding, when, when our emoji, emoji embeddings were used, uh, you know, uh, we could obtain uh, the best results for this uh, uh, benchmark experiment. Uh, what oh. I'm interested in is how these results. Yeah, so uh, here's the correct side. <laughs> what what I'm interested in how these results, what, what do these results mean with regards to um, appropriate uses or applications? Yeah. So uh, I say whether the application is ranking or advertisement or a similarity, you know, keyboard generation, whatever those things are. Okay. So uh, so the first result that I. Uh, Showed you. Hide this slide. Okay, so the first result uh, that I showed you here. So this basically tells tells you if you were to pick. Uh, a particular emoji embedding model uh, out of the eight that we train. Google news page emoji embeddings that we learn uh, with the help of sense labels is the best one to pick because that is the one that uh, you know best aligns with uh, human judgment. That's fine. Right. Then how uh, good it is from a um, pers from perspective actually using this for an application. Yes. So, uh, and you've not done that work. I, right now, you can only interpret it for me, yeah. saying the 60s is uh, 50s and 60s is a good number for them. No, or? yeah, that's why that's why I said uh, the uh, intention of this experiment was not to come up with a state of the art uh, sentiment analysis uh, algorithm. So you can certainly improve, uh, you know, add a lot of features and try to improve uh, the the text part. But if you want to incorporate emojis. Then use the uh, sense, use our sense label based emojis, you know emoji embeddings, 
then it will uh, give you uh, you know the best performance out it of the be, rest of the it will uh, give you the best performance among yeah. the choices available to you technical choices yes. that doesn't mean it's still good enough for that intended application what does the 60% mean yeah so uh, this Where, 60 so this result uh, can be further improved dr Chet, because mm -hmm. uh, uh, we did not do any other you know tweaks related to sentiment analysis mm -hmm. uh, when we are doing this benchmark mark experiment we just wanted to compare our embeddings with others so if you uh, try to improve the uh, but you know for the commercialization or application yeah. that's what you need to answer no you don't have to yeah. answer for you uh, as a phd student you don't need to answer but that's what you know ultimately makes a difference yeah. Yeah, so uh, we we could also show that uh, our embeddings work uh, better than the uh, our work our, our embeddings actually work better than the uh, uh, existing uh, emoji embeddings. In fact, we were able to show uh, an improvement of the accuracy close to nine percent when we use uh, when when compared our results with uh, purely distributional semantics based results. And uh, when emojis are present, that value is even stronger. So you see, uh, like here, you see uh, a huge improvement, close to 33%. Uh, but the state, we, we also improved the state of the art uh, from 6 to 7%. Uh, you know, we improved it by 6 to 7%. So uh, here, this is the state of the art. Uh, so you know, what's the difference us. between the Google News Word embedding Twitter because it seems like Google News is doing better with the SVMs and then the Twitter is doing better with the random forest. Yeah, so uh, uh, so this Twitter embeddings, uh, so we replace these sense labels using uh, word embeddings we learn from tweets and uh, Google News. So in this case, the words in the sense labels were uh, replaced with uh, uh, word embeddings that we learn from Twitter. So in this case, uh, the words are, uh, you know, uh, the words in sense labels mm -hmm. are replaced by uh, their corresponding word vectors learned from a Google News based embedding. So that's the uh, that's the basic difference there. But we we even could not explain why why this happened in our paper. Okay. No, but you're you're using on tweets. You're evaluating that, right? Yes. Yes. And and so, do people use uh, emojis in non normal documents? Uh, not, not really, but they So then I can understand why this would be superior. Uh, oh, yeah, because, uh, because of the text. Yeah. yeah, yeah, so yeah, that's one explanation that uh, we also gave in the paper. Uh, but for her question, why uh, this worked in random forest, uh, you know, why random forest uh, work, you know, why tweets work well in random forest and the other uh, Google News worked in uh, SPM, that we did not answer in our paper, so we could not explain that. But yeah, certainly for with tweets, uh, you know, because of the language uh, similarities, uh, Twitter-based embeddings uh, work well. Yeah, I already discussed that. So yeah. Uh, so the last task uh, that I'm going to discuss is related to uh, emoji uh, sense and intent disambiguation. So the emoji sense disambiguation part uh, was, you know. Uh, Briefly done in our ICWSM paper, we have some uh, baseline implementation for that, and that is, that is what I'm going to discuss. So I already uh, shown you this. Uh, I, I showed you this picture, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, the ice emoji can take two meanings in this context. So uh, the problem of emoji sense disambiguation is to come up with uh, a method so that the computer can actually label these, you know, automatically for us. And uh, in a recent paper by Miller and others, uh, they, you know, after doing some experiments, they said that this is a difficult uh, task to address. So, currently there is no uh, uh, label data set that, that uh, you could use to uh, approach this emoji sense disambiguation problem. So that's why we wanted to see whether, you know, we can use uh, ImojiNet and the sense labels and uh, you know, context words that we can extract from ImojiNet uh, could be used here. So if you look at this example, I have shown you two, tweet, two tweets and 
uh, that has the same emoji. And I have also shown you uh, two different sense definitions that I could extract from uh, ImojiNet along with the uh, context words that I extracted from their sense definitions. And if you look at, uh, uh, look at the two sense definitions and the tweets, uh, the words in the first tweet, uh, like two words, pray and go, overlaps with the sense definition that is coming uh, from the pray sense. And uh, the word celebrate uh, overlap with the uh, sense definitions uh, for the high five sense. So based on these words, word overlaps, we can assign high five sense to this uh, emoji in tweet, uh, tweet two, and uh, uh, pray sense uh, for the uh, emoji in the first tweet. So this particular algorithm uh, is called the simplified lesk algorithm. So that is a basic overlap based word sense disambiguation algorithm that you can, you can try. And that's exactly what we did uh, in our experiment of uh, disambiguating the meaning of uh, 25 of the most commonly misunderstood uh, emojis on the web. So uh, we trained, uh, we, we extracted three different uh, context word vectors. So the first one is directly com coming from the BabelNet uh, sense descriptions. Then what we did was we trained a word embedding model and then we expanded each and every word in this uh, uh, you know, context word vector with the related words learned from, uh, for the, uh, uh, from the uh, Twitter uh, uh, word embedding model. We did the same using a Google News-based word embedding model as well. Mm -hmm. So here, all the words uh, in the BabelNet sense descriptions are expanded with uh, news uh, you know, related words learned from the uh, News-based embedding. And here they are extended with words from uh, the Twitter uh, Twitter engine. We did that because um, NLP re research suggests us that uh, when you train uh, when you train a system using well-formed text, it will not work the same when you apply that system uh, for social media text because the language is different. In fact, we also noticed that. So if you see, uh, when we you know we only did this experiment with tweets. So for tweets. The Twitter-based, uh, you know, uh, uh, context word, word expansion method actually gives us uh, better results compared to the others. So this is uh, this is something that we reported in our ICWSM uh, paper in 2017. Um, and yeah, so we are planning to improve uh, this method because this is based on uh, simplified less algorithm, which is a very basic overlap-based uh, word sense disambiguation approach. Uh, so in future, these are some of the tasks that I would like to work. So I would like to work on uh, emoji intent, intent identification. Basically, it talks about, you know, it, 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 it examines how, sorry, people use emoji. Uh, then I also want to work on emoji prediction problem. Given a text, can you predict an emoji? Uh, and uh, we have also built an RDF serialization of uh, our resource and we also want to publish a paper on that. So. And uh, this is the proposed uh, timeline, uh, sorry, timeline for the proposed task. So in uh, at the end of uh, fall 2017, I'm planning to finish the work on emoji intent and sense disambiguation. And by the end of spring, we are planning to uh, finish the work on emoji prediction and uh, emoji net so, so what's the difference between intent and prediction? I mean, to me, they look the same. Uh, intent, okay, so prediction, in prediction task, uh, what you have is a text, uh, a text input, and based on the text, mm -hmm. you will predict uh, what emoji would follow. So the intent is a means to that end? Uh, in, in intent, uh, what you have is you should have uh, an already, you know, okay. So you should have a data set where you would, uh, you would, you know, look at um, how people use, uh, basically a label data set with uh, tweets and emoji. And then the label would be, uh, okay, in this tweet, uh, the, uh, the emoji has been used to express emotion. In this next tweet, the emoji has been used to replace a particular word. So yeah, you know that will be your training data set, and the uh, output is given a tweet whether you can 
say what is the use of that emoji. Yeah, so that's the difference between the two tasks. So if you can say the intention behind you know, using emoji, it could, so we also hypothesize that uh, it could also improve uh, tasks like work, sorry, emoji sense dissemination. So that's why we want to uh, you know, address that task. How many labels would there be in the intent? Oh, uh, uh, okay. right so now. far based on the previous studies, uh, five to six okay. classes okay. will be there. Okay. So it's fairly exhaustive. I mean, it's not a huge list of no, possible no, options. No, 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 no. So people, so there's, there's one uh, paper from uh, a group from uh, who, who, who happened to work at Yahoo Research. So uh, in 2016, uh, I think the author's name was Karma. So uh, she studied uh, the sender intentions of emoji. Mm -hmm. So they report, I think, uh, five to six uses of emoji in that paper. So that's what uh, we are going to base our, uh, you know, uh, training set uh, generation. And uh, here are some of my publications. And thank you very much for attending my talk and listening to me. It's time for questions. Mm -hmm. You should have told us that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, any questions? So are you praying or are you celebrating? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <After> the questions. <laughs> yeah, please. So, uh, I have one suggestion. Um, yeah, go ahead, Vimbo. Remember the, the, the example that uh, you showed at the very beginning uh, using emoji, this Kami, maybe the lyrics, yes. right? Yeah, yeah. I think it'd be, it's, it's like a hack idea. I think it'd be super cool if you develop an API or a web page, right? So people just type something you know, in a normal text and then you can cover them into such you know, text with emojis. So that would be pretty cool. Yeah, pretty yes, yeah, pretty yeah in, in fact, uh, uh, Anurag, who is uh, also joining with us on Hangout, uh, so he worked with me uh, last summer. He, he built a tool that you know, exactly does that. So we have not made that tool publicly available uh, because we want to do some improvements on it. Uh, but yeah, we do have a small tool that uh, yeah, that think, would replace words with emoji. I think we should uh, take this tool and just do a demo paper at a major conference. Okay. Yeah, I think that's the right thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Vembo, uh, we have not. Uh, did I answer your question, Vembo? Oh, it was not a question. It was just a okay. Just a question. <laughs> okay. So uh, we have a question from uh, the audience. Uh, yeah, please. Uh, yeah. So. Uh, with the work that you've done on uh, emojis, right, and by extension, uh, images, uh, what we see increasingly in today's uh, social media is that uh, people are focusing more on using emojis and, and images to convey information rather than text. So, so my question is, and also looking at the trends uh, in in the social media world, where you know Facebook uh, buying Instagram and you know. Uh, Information being converted into images. Uh, do you see? Uh, do you see a possibility in the future where whatever text analytics that we are using right now is going to be increasingly redundant, or it's increasingly going to phase out, and we may have to look at something as novel as this from your? <laughs> yeah, I don't think that will happen. Uh, but certainly, what we would like to do, uh, or we would want to achieve, is that we develop resources so that other researchers can apply the same uh, text processing algorithms on emojis utilizing our resources. So that's exactly uh, one of the ideas behind uh, you know, uh, why we came up with uh, ImojiNet. Actually, here's the point. And broadly speaking, what happens is that uh, more information rich content form i mean people are going to go from more uh, le more verbose form to more con you know information rich content Concise. form um, maybe because uh, it just conveys the thing in a very compact way even on a desktop but all the more on the uh, social media uh, sorry all the more on the mobile platform or on the go like you know streaming you are listening while driving you want to convey a lot more information in a shorter time frame. So, whether you you know um, 
whether you want a more finer emotion captured through emoji or whether you want to uh, type only so much of the content uh, with uh, you know words and uh, uh, five words replaced by one emoji or something like that so that will happen but currently that is happening with emoji that may happen even with more richer form of representation so um, uh, I think we just will have to see exactly what form it takes. Uh, I th do think that images per se, uh, some videos, uh, they will get enriched uh, because people, it's like the following. You might have, um, I, I recently saw a video where uh, uh, somebody said uh, he was consuming the podcast in 2x the rate, right? Now, what does it imply? that he, wa he is able to consume more information that, you know, on that topic and he has a shorter time and he wants to co cover, go through more of it. So how do you, you know, uh, go from a denser form, you know, from the current text and verbose form to a more denser form? That will continue to happen. People want to type less, people want to, you know, just have, you know, convey more through more denser form of interaction. In that sense, uh, at a broader level, you're your your uh, question is on the mark, and we need to think more about that. Yeah. So, I have. Can you miss Sanjay? No, 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 no. Uh, Doctor Doctor Ran, yeah, go ahead. I have really high hopes for EmojiNet. You know, because I see this as we're talking it along this line. I see this as kind of the interface by which we start to establish some meaning attached to any type of visual representation, maybe not super complex imagery, but if you think on uh, iOS, you think of an emoji, yeah? Or yeah. you think of, like, we can kind of like hand draw, do a little drawing and set it off, right? Yeah. Yeah. You can imagine a mapping of these different forms of visual communication over to emoji by some similarity measure. That's how you kind of bootstrap the knowledge representation to yeah. assess that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and th but Thinking about how important I can see emoji net being in the future for tasks beyond emoji, it begs the question, like, kind of what the, the, the quality of the information that we're actually sticking into emoji net is. And, and I missed that. I didn't see the part where we talked about doing any sanity checking or, or you know, verifying that the senses we're inserting into emoji net, especially from the emoji dictionary, is valid or representative. Uh, you can't really say what's valid or not, but is there any way of checking if it's like, total nonsense or meaningless? You know, is are we are we doing any check to make sure that there's some there's some quality measure with respect to the senses we're adding to emoji now? Yes. So, uh, Doctor Darren, uh, if the you... invalid sense labels. I saw that, but yeah. like, so there are two uh, <laughs> two different uh, approaches that we take. So the first one is uh, to remove the invalid. Uh, no, first one is to remove the uh, uh, to to validate the uh, sense label with uh, double net. So uh, the example of removing uh, the face emoji. Yeah. So the face as an adjective, right? So the second part where we remove invalid sense labels from emoji. Uh, so what that means is, uh, so if you look at P. Uh, 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 and uh, the POS tag now. So that's a correct use of the word pig, right? And someone has put that, uh, someone has listed that under uh, the face with tears of Joe emoji. So we asked two human annotators, uh, you know, all the uh, sense labels that, that, were, uh, that pass this first, uh, you know, form of validation, right? We asked from two human annotators whether uh, those sense labels are actually valid for a given emoji. We, we, we did, in fact, uh, try to, uh, you know, maintain... Okay, on, yeah, I see. I yeah. see, I see, I see. Yeah. Okay. Only the okay. value... This is, this is all manual right now, yeah? Yeah, so this step is manual. Yeah, we... Yeah, we, we can get away with doing it manually because we're not automatically updating emoji now. Yeah, right? we, we did uh, do this step uh, automatically in our uh, SOC Info uh, 2016 paper. So what we did was we looked at how many uh, people agree upon this particular sense. But for uh, 
for this and and we noticed that it it largely reduces the number of sensor sense definitions in our resource so that's why we uh, we brought in this step and you know try to support as ma many sensors as possible in the resource but, yeah we we do so. have a complete automated version uh, implementation and uh, you know the the implementation that i i presented here has this uh, manual step which make make it uh, semi automated yeah, it's a fun question to, yeah. even though if you can do it automatically, period. Yeah, I mean, uh, we have once tried it, so we can we can try some new approaches uh, <laughs> too. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So there's there's one question from the audience, uh, Dr. Doris. Yeah, please. So uh, I think our first slide, uh, forty three. So. Yeah. Is this the, the evaluation criteria accuracy or F1 score? Uh, so this is uh, the F score. Oh, the F score. Yeah. Because I was sorry, because you said classification accuracy. I was. I oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah. It's a good okay. point. I... And uh, so I think on another table you also have the accuracy on the on your third part. So I wanted to tell you that I wanted to ask actually. Do you think accuracy is a fair measurement in case you have any imbalance problem in your data set to report when you uh, So if I specifically talk about this particular, uh, you know, uh, problem setting, so why we wanted to this uh, do this experiment was to uh, actually check how well our emoji embeddings, uh, you know, perform uh, compared to the other emoji embeddings out there on the web. So if you three, uh, if you look at these first three rows, uh, so here's here's uh, so this is basically word embedding. This is not emoji embeddings at all. Uh, so this one uh, and this one. So these two are from uh, two different approaches. The the third approach was not publicly available in the time that we ran. So we wanted to check uh, how well we do compared to these two. So that's why we uh, you know conducted this experiment. So. In fact, uh, if I talk about the uh, uh, talk about the uh, data set, so this data set was uh, well balanced. So it has it had three classes. Uh, so I don't remember the uh, you know uh, uh, distribution of the three classes, but we did report that in our paper. So yeah. And so and uh, I want the next question was so how. You make sure that the difference that you got from this table is a statistically significant. We did uh, uh, do the uh, uh, statistical significant test for uh, these things. So if you look at uh, like uh, because uh, so this benchmark uh, uh, implementation already comes with uh, all the code. So. Uh, if you look at emoji to wet paper, they have all also uh, reported that their uh, results are statistically significant. So we also performed that, and and, and in the paper uh, we did report that. But yeah, I did not include that in the slide. And also another one in the agreement, uh, the the annotation annotator. for similarity. Ah uh, yeah. So did you capture the uh, annotators agreement? Because I remember when we were doing it, we got lots of. Yes, yes, yes. We we did uh, capture the annotators agreement. Uh, in fact, let me copy paste this one. We have so, a part of that in the web intelligence paper, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, I, just leave it uh, so, right now. Oh yeah, you, you can you can see it. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So we did uh, capture the annotator agreement using uh, Crifando's alpha method. Uh, so for the Q1, the annotator agreement was 0.63. For Q2, it was 0.56. Yeah, and for the emojis, uh, uh, so all experiment that uh, we did in EmojiNet where we used annotators, we uh, for those also we uh, you know captured the annotator agreement. I did not uh, present those uh, statistics here. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions from the audience? No. 